and I will now hand over uh, to the presenters. I, I will acknowledge um, Lynette Ellis, who is also uh, joining us by Zoom, um, the Head of Transport. So I will hand over. Kia ora koutou. Um, my apologies for uh, not being there today. I decided to keep the germs to myself. So um, Zoom is a great thing for doing that. Um, look, I'm going to keep it really quick with a briefing, uh, with a brief intro today, just to remind us where we've been and got to, so that we can uh, just set the scene for the hearings panel today. So, Papanui Ki Wai Fitu, or Wheels to Wings Cycleway. We, I, I, I acknowledge that it's been quite a while since we did go out and um, talk to the community and gather all the feedback. There was a lot of feedback and the team have been doing a huge amount of work since then. So they've been coding the submissions, um, continuing to work through ideas with stakeholders and submitters. They've also contacted a lot of submitters along the way and they've been doing a lot of consultation analysis. So that's all going to come out in the briefing today. And, um, and we'll also talk through all of the design alternatives that we've looked at. So if you can flick the slide for me, please, Anne or Ollie, one of you, with the power. Great, thank you. So just to um, remind everyone, our objectives here are um, to design a safe cycleway for people to use as an alternative to using their cars. Um, the design demographic, we've talked about it before, is the interested but concerns translates to that 88 to 80. For those of you that have been um, with council for a while, you might rem remember a, um, a visit we had from Jan Gell from um, Denmark, where he talked about designing a livable city for those that are at, from eight to 80, so that everyone can take part in the city. Cycleways are also a way that we've, we've proven that we can reduce our emissions, we can improve the health of our communities, it improves the um, livability of our communities. Now, at the moment, we've got well over 40 kilometres completed of our cycleways, we've got about 100 kilometres planned, um, and we've got four routes currently in construction. That is the South Express heading out towards Templeton, the Norwest Arc, um, primarily that started at Princess Margaret Hospital and is heading across towards the university and then um, around towards to connect up to this cycleway, we've got the Rapanui to Shag Rock uh, cycleway down through Charlesworth Reserve, currently under construction. And we've got the Northern Line um, that we've got a little bit under construction up, up through Barnes Reserve. Do a switch for me, please. Here we go. So these are our objectives. We're looking to deliver against the objectives of the Christchurch Strategic uh, Transport Plan, which is really about us trying to provide a realistic mode choice for people. But we want to be specific to the needs of the people of Christchurch. We want to be safe and realistic and achievable. And like I said just before, it's really about attracting those people that would like to cycle, but whatever that but is, and nine times out of 10, that is about, it doesn't feel safe enough. So it's about providing a facility that feels safer to those people that want to try one or two of their trips each week by cycle. And really try and make a difference in mode shift. That's what we're trying to achieve here and, and giving people options. So my last slide before I hand over to the team is the next one. So that's the network that we've got here in Christchurch. And this is actually a little bit unique in here in New Zealand and that we are the only city that is putting together a, a cohesive and interconnected network. Now you can see from this, the dark pieces are built. The medium strength pieces are underway. Um, the, uh, and the lighter ones are the ones that are planned for the future. Now, those two that are predominantly waiting to be built are the two main river routes. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see circled in green, Papanui Kifai, Waifetu, or Wheels to Wings out there heading from 
northern line out towards the airport, but it also connects with that orbital route round towards Princess Margaret Hospital. So one of the major benefits that we have in Christchurch and the major benefits from building this program of work is that, and we've talked about it before, is that for every dollar we spend, we get $8 of benefit, but it's from building the, the network and that's where we've had such good support through the government funding in the past. Um, it is a big network and we're just talking about a small part of it today. Um, it's still a reasonably long route. So the team are going to split it into three sections and they'll take questions at the end of each section. Um, Ollie, Ollie will go through that, but we're going to divide it into four sections, there's that. Um, they'll, they'll work through that. It is these, building these cycleways um, and getting these into existing networks is complex and difficult. It is, it, 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 it requires compromise. But often, and we've found this in the past, often we end up with benefit, not just for cycleways. So we end up with improved walking facilities. Um, we often end up having to um, do things for the electrical network. Sometimes there's undergrounding. So there's all sorts of other benefits that we can achieve along the way. So, but they'll try, they'll try and talk through some of that as we go as well through this. So that's largely my introduction, and I, I don't think there's anything new in that. So I'll just pass over to Ollie to keep going. They're the ones that have got all the detail. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so the objective of today is to brief the hearings panel on the Wheels to Wings cycleway. And we're going to uh, divide the project up into three main sections because it's a relatively long route at 4.6k so we're going to look at the west end from Johns Road to Numwick Boulevard and then the east end from Gerrard's Road to the northern line and then finally the central section which is Numwick Boulevard through to uh, Gerrard's Road. I'll present the, the project background and design considerations for a, a cycleway and specifically for the wheels to wings route. And then Anne will go and provide an overview of the community and stakeholder feedback. So the, back in 2017, we undertook a, a, a route selection where we um, looked at a wider network and identified where uh, a cycleway could go linking the Johns Road underpass through to uh, the Harewood Road at the railway line. And, and that was um, presented and, and discussed with the community boards through those areas, the Papua Nui Innes and Fendleton Waimari Harewood community boards. In, in 2018, uh, the Harewood Road was endorsed as the preferred route for a major cycleway to be on. And that was endorsed by the Infrastructure Transport Environment Committee. In 2019, the Gardner's Breen's Hewitt intersection uh, upgrade was uh, approved by council. And that is for traffic signals to be uh, installed at that intersection. And, and as part of that, uh, funding was brought forward and, and for that to be included with the construction of the wheels to wings. In 2020, we started the scheme design reporting. So that involved uh, joint community board briefings in, in November. Um, the Urban Design and, and Transport Committee uh, confirmed the route along Matson's Ave as the preferred route for Norway Stark. Uh, during the same time, the Greer's Harewood intersection was identified for minor safety improvements. And the Northern Line Harewood Road crossing was confirmed for traffic signals with construction of those expected in 2023. Uh, this year, in the first quarter in, in January to March has been the public consultation, the start of the consultation that's still ongoing now, and separate briefings of the community boards. This map here shows what we considered in the, the route selection 
process. And this is the route that was endorsed by the ITE in 2018. We've got a start point at the western end of the Johns Road roundabout, which has a underpass that links to the airport zone. And at the eastern end, we have the Northern Line Railway, which connects with the existing Northern Line route and the, uh, at that time, proposed Norway Start route on Matson's Ave, and provides a connection into the uh, Northlands Mall area, Mitre 10 area. You can see the width of the corridor, which is shown in the, the light blue, is quite extensive. It extends to Sawyer's Arms Road in the north through to Wairaki Road in the south. And all the different coloured lines on there are the different routes that were assessed against certain criteria. So criteria for cycleway users, criteria on impacts to the community, and uh, criteria on cost and program. The outcome of this was the identification of Hereward Road as the preferred route, which was endorsed by the ITE in 2018. And as part of that evaluation of the route, we identified what's a, a straw man of a facility type. So the facility type wasn't locked in, it was just an understanding of what kind of facility would be suitable for the volume of the road and the areas we're trying to connect into. So back in 2017, the facility types that we thought would be appropriate at that time uh, are shown there from a, a shared path on the south side down by Heward School, um, two-way past Nunwuk Park, one ways through the, the central section, and then either one ways or a, or a two-way on the north side from Greras Road uh, through to the Northern Line Railway. So what do we consider when evaluating a major cycle route and the kind of facility that might uh, be included on a road. For the Wheels to Wings project, there are a number of improvements in the area. Um, a number of improvements in the area that have a direct impact on Hereward Road and for the, the wider area. So the first one highlighted here is the Northcote Sawyer's Arms traffic signals and the Northcote Road improvements, which is a, a capacity improvement to get more traffic through. And what this project does, interesting, what this project does is it promotes the east-west link along Sawyer's Arms Road from Kiwi 2 Drive. So that is, if you look at the, the laser pointer, it's the route coming from Kiwi 2 Drive along Northcote Road, improvements at this Northcote Sawyers intersection, improves capacity and attracts more traffic to Sawyers Arms Road. So that's quite a difficult turn to undertake at the moment, the right turn from Northcote Road to Sawyers Arms Road. So that improvement attracts a lot of traffic away from Hereward Road and onto Sawyer's Arms Road. Other improvements include the Greras Road intersection, where there's currently a crash problem, and there's a safety project that's going to provide right turn arrows off Hereward Road and Greras Road. There's the Breen's Hereward intersection that has been approved by Council for Construction, and that's new traffic signals there. The feedback from the public was that it's quite difficult to exit uh, Breen's or Greer, uh, Gardner's Road. The Sawyer's Arms Highstead Roundabout, uh, capacity improvements proposed in 2028. 
And then the Greer is Langdon's intersection. That's had uh, increasing pressure on that intersection. It's currently unfunded, but it has been investigated by staff. Some of the more general considerations that we evaluate, there's a whole list of them here, and this isn't everything that's considered, but we look at uh, mobility and visually impaired users. How could they um, interact with the facility type? What is the loss of on-street parking for, for residents and for, for businesses? Um, local businesses, what kind of access requirements do they have on and off-street parking? Um, do they have buildings that are right up to the property boundaries? Emergency services, is it a key corridor for emergency services? Uh, network impacts, that the previous slide showed what the overall improvements in the area would be, but what happens when we put additional signals along a route? And uh, the cost in the programme. It's a relatively constrained budget that we work to, and how does that uh, tie in with the overall program of works. Specific considerations for the wheels to wing and the, and the Heward Road route is the four lane section, what are the effects of removing a traffic lane? Does this support other improvements in the area and is it supported by other improvements such as the, the Northcote Road signalisation? The link to the Northern Line MCR, which is existing, and the proposed Norwest Arc on Matson's Ave. How do these interact with each other? How will they connect? The Bishopdale Roundabout. It's a large intersection, a lot of mature trees in the middle of it. What's going to be most efficient for traffic, but also the pedestrians that are in the area and riders coming through? Quite unique to, to Hereward Road is the number of rest homes and retirement villages, particularly up the, the eastern end with Golden Age and, and Wesley Care. We have the parks, Nunwick Park, uh, Bishopdale Park, and, and sporting events that occur there. There's, there's a really high on-street parking demand associated with those, along with the everyday activity of parents coming along with children. Vehicle speeds along Hereward Road. Now the surveys are showing that the vehicle speeds on Hereward Road are about 5k an hour higher than for a road of this function. So if we compare that to the likes of Memorial Ave, the, the average speed along there is 50k. Hereward Road's up at 55. So there's a speed issue along there, and we've had that feedback from the public. And then the range of business types. So we've got the rest homes, you've got Mega 10, Mitre 10 Mega, um, Charity Hospital, Copenhagen. They're all various different size businesses with different delivery requirements and different needs. So what analysis have we done to help answer some of those queries and make an informed decision? We've undertaken parking surveys and looked at what's the available parking on street uh, and how much of it is being used at the moment, so what's the demand. And in some key areas, where are people parking to go to uh, a local business? What's the volume of traffic that's using the road and, and what's the number of riders that are, are currently using the road, and particularly around the, the roundabout? And then traffic modelling. Because it's such a large area and there are other improvements proposed, traffic modelling has been done on a city-wide scale, which has then been refined down to the Hereward Road route and then down to individual intersections. And this is really to evaluate what the impacts would be of the Northcote Greer's improvements what are the impacts of the Greer's Road safety improvements, and what happens if a traffic lane was removed. 
And then we looked at drainage assessments. Where are the, where's the flooding in the area? Um, crime prevention through environmental design. So what's the safety of people that are using the route currently? And Hebert Road has quite a good uh, SECDED outcome. It has houses, residential houses that are facing the street, and it has a reasonable volume of traffic, so there's a lot of passive observation. And then arborist assessments. What's the condition of the trees? What effect would uh, construction have on the trees? So the concepts identified during the scheme stage in 2020 are presented up there. And at the west end, we're looking at three different facility type concepts. Through the central section, there were six, and at the eastern end, there were, there were two main concepts. And these concepts have been evaluated against the uh, design criteria, such as safety for the riders, and that being key for attracting new riders, the interested but concerned group. Um, how direct is the route, and how direct is the facility on there, and how comfortable is it to use. And then we look at the community impact. So um, will parking be removed outside residential properties? Will access to businesses be restricted? And then the cost and the, the risk associated with delivering uh, that facility. So review of those options on the previous slide resulted in a, the recommendation of a preferred con concept to go out to consultation. And that is the design that was consulted on, was started in, in January of this year. It's really a straw man for consultation, and it's based on our technical assessment and we go out to the public and say, we've done a technical assessment, we've visited the site, the site a number of times, different times of day, and we have an understanding of the route. But we don't live there. We don't see what happens 24-7. We don't see what happens during special events. So we come out to you. We come out to the public and ask them, Tell us how this might impact you. Here's our straw man. Here's our best technical assessment. Tell us how that impacts you. And we can then evaluate that and, and make some changes where needed. So the route that was consulted on, if I quickly run through that, from the west end, you have the underpass of John's Road. A shared path is provided on the south side of Whitchurch Street, which continues to Waymac Road on the left-hand side, the western side, and then crosses over to the eastern side of Waymac Road, down to Harewood Road. It crosses Harewood Road via new pedestrian and cycle symbols signals that are on a, a raised platform. So this slows down the traffic and it creates a safe zone for the kids to cross from Harewood School. The shared path then continues along the south side of Harewood Road up to Waldridge Road where new traffic signals at Harewood Road the riders can cross and continue via the shared path in front of Nunrit Park up to Kilmuir Lane. At Kilmuir Lane the facility changes to a two-way separated facility on the south side of Harewood Road, and that continues up to Nunwick Boulevard, where there are mid-block pedestrian and cycle signals, and the facility swaps to a one-way facility on either side of Harewood Road. That one-way facility continues along either side of Harewood Road through the Gardner's intersection with new traffic signals up to Bishopdale Roundabout. At Bishopdale Roundabout, the one-way comes into the middle of the roundabout via 
pedestrian and cyclist signals, through the roundabout and out the other side onto a two-way facility on the northern side of Harewood Road. The two-way on the north side continues through the Greeras intersection, which has the safety improvements. Through the traffic signals there, continues along the north side of Harewood Road up to the Chapel Street, Matson Street area, where mid-block signals for pedestrians and cycles cross, changes the facility to one ways either side of Harewood Road, which continue up to the northern line. So I'll now hand you over to Anne, who's the uh, consultation lead, and she'll provide a, a, a briefing of the feedback from the community and stakeholders. Thanks, Ollie. Um, so as Ollie mentioned earlier, we had a consultation for this project um, was held in January of this year and through to the 15th of March, and that included four drop-in sessions that were really well attended by members of the community. There was an extension um, due to a COVID um, level drop, so um, it, which meant we extended the consultation further and added in um, some drop-ins, an extra drop-in session. Um, we met with some businesses and groups before consultation. Um, but it was a project that started pretty quickly, so we didn't manage to get through as many pre-engagement meetings as we would have liked. However, we continued to meet with some of the key groups and businesses during the early stages of the consultation. And a number of these meetings have continued since the close of consultation, where we've had ongoing discussions um, and one-on-one -on -one meetings with different groups and businesses in the area. We um, delivered approximately 2,000 documents were delivered on the route and just off to the sides of Hewood Road in small ad sorry, adjacent side streets and with approximately 650 properties directly on Hewood Road um, who will be directly affected by the cycleway. In that area, um, there was only 189 absentee owners, so it shows there's a really high percentage of properties that are owner-occupied, which is quite unusual in our consultations. We tend to have a, a lot higher in terms of um, absentee owners. And we also um, sent an email out to our stakeholder list, which had approximately 200 people on that. We um, received over just over 1,300 submissions, um, and that was from businesses, organisations and residents, and um, just over 300 of those um, were from properties within the deliver delivery area. So it showed a, a real high interest citywide on this project. And um, as Ollie mentioned earlier, um, Hewood Road was really, uh, it's really interesting in the fact that it is a mixture of small businesses. Um, we have dairies, funeral homes, dentists and doctors. Um, some of those um, businesses do have off-street parking. Um, the dairies are reliant on quick on-street parking where people can just duck in and grab an ice cream or something. Um, then you've got your larger businesses with your Mega Mitre 10 at the eastern end as well as Bishop Dale Mall right in the middle. And then, um, like Ollie also referred to earlier, we have three um, retirement villages rest homes, which again is quite unusual in, um, on one road. And sports parks, um, two major sports parks, uh, charity hospital, and we've also got um, with Copenhagen Bakery, which is a really popular destination that people visit from citywide, um, that has relocated from the central city um, out to Hewood Road. And we've also got um, the consultation showed there was a lot of people that live in the area that have lived there for a really long time um, within the delivery area and have seen a lot of changes over the years, so they were able to provide us with some really good feedback. Oh, right hand side on left handed. Um, so the map just to the bottom left of your screen, um, the red line is Hewood Road and the blue area is the area that we delivered the flyers to. So we um, targeted the houses directly on the route and we just went back um, a bit just off to the side streets and especially in that 
um, top left hand corner up by Numwick Park, um, that, those particular streets, their only entry and exit is straight onto Hewood Road, so that's why that area is probably a bit larger than some of the areas on the map. And um, when we did the consultation, we didn't specifically ask people whether they supported the suck away or not, we just asked for people to provide us some feedback. But however, when we did our consultation analysis, we, um, based on the feedback that we received, we we thought it was important to try um, to get an understanding of where people sat. So while we didn't ask the question about support, based on the analysis as staff, we came up with those people that really clearly supported that when you read this submission, um, really clearly supported the cons uh, sorry, the cycle way. Um, we would code that. A clear opposition, if, again, if their submission really, really clearly opposed the cycle way, we coded that. And the ones who we have no clear indication for or against, they were people who provided feedback, however, didn't really give any clear indication around the actual cycle way itself. So that shows you um, sort of a bit of a breakdown uh, on people's position on the cycle way, and we've then separated them into um, sort of the four major suburbs, I guess, in that part of the city, as, sorry, eight, four, as well as those people from outside of the area. So people, submitters who have um, a PO box number, um, may not have provided us with an address and or whose address was outside of those four suburbs, um, they are the people that are sitting in the other column. So the breakdown of numbers in terms of the spread is similar to other cycleways across the city, um, possibly a bit more opposition to the cycleway in this area, but um, overall it generally is in alignment with other cycleway projects that we've consulted on in the past. In the um, early stages of consultation, um, to, it, was, it wasn't myself, it was uh, my colleague prior to me um, and one of the team went and met with the students at Hallsville School. And um, so they got to meet with all of the students apart from one, I think it was year six, um, who were away on a school camp, um, but other than that, every other student was involved. So um, just a quick snapshot of what, um, a lot of really good feedback came from the children, but currently how the students you can see on the left currently a really high percentage of students currently get to school by car um, however when the team asked the children how they'd like to get to school um, it was really clear that looking at um, scooters biking um, high percentage would like to come on the bus um, so and that's based purely on students feedback and it showed quite a difference that a lot of these children would like to be able to travel to school and under a different mode of transport rather than coming by the car. So, but being really mindful, this is from children, um, it may not be able to be able to do that, but it just gives a really clear picture that um, when we have a school on the road, the children, if able to, will use it. Oh, do I flip back there? Just my thing. Sorry, it was while we're talking on the school one, I should mention that um, we also received a submission from the Ministry of Education um, and they were looking at, at from the bigger picture and they identified there are six schools in the area who could I, who could benefit from the new cycleway and they are Hewood School, Cotswold, Breens, Bishopdale, Islesworth and Papanui High. Um, they also said that the new signals um, on the route will actually increase safety for their students and their teachers getting to and from school. Um, they were they did raise a slight concern that the um, changes could result in um, vehicles using other routes which may cause safety concerns for other schools, but they're generally supportive of infrastructure um, anywhere near schools that uh, facilitate active transport as well as improve safety for their students. This is just a quick snapshot of an, um, and I'll go into a wee bit more detail in the, um, the corresponding slides, but this, uh, these themes are where we received over 100 submissions um, on the particular theme. So that, these are sort of the top, I think it's 12 or 13, where we um, got over 100 submissions mentioning these topics. Um, so as you can see, parking loss, um, the lane reduction, cost and congest cost of the project um, and congestion are sort of the main ones which generated the most feedback. You'll also see in there that the signals proposed for Herewood Gardeners Breen's intersection is the community is still really, really supportive of that particular component of the project. And um, But that just gives you a quick overall picture of um, where these really key themes came through from our feedback. Yep. 
So getting into the themes. So the key benefits that were noted um, by our submitters, um, it was recognised that with the cycle way um, comes other additions. For example, signalised crossings, um, narrowing down of the side streets for people to cross and generally makes it a lot safer for pedestrians in the area. Um, so it's a safety benefit, of course, for the people biking and walking in the area. And with the number of schools, we received submissions both from parents and students who um, say currently if they bike, feel very unsafe biking on Hewood Road, um, but if we had the cycle way, um, they're quite excited about the fact that they would be able to bike to school. Um, there was a feedback around um, a reduction in it was reducing carbon emissions and that the cycleways are consistent with the um, the with the Climate Change Commissioner's recommendations and also the Council's declaration of a climate emergency. Physical and mental wellbeing, and that was um, came through very strong CDHB um, in our, when we went to meet with the age concern around providing facilities that their age range of the 8 to 80 can use and that we see a lot of um, older people out on their bikes now using a lot of the cycleways around the city. Um, and it's a way to get people out and moving and feeling safe as well. Um, as I said earlier, we've got um, still very widespread support for the signalising at Hewood Gardner's Springs intersection and also a lot of support for um, the signalised crossings that we're going to be putting in both for pedestrians and cyclists. And when we spoke to um, the team at Wesley Care, uh, a lot of their residents cross, currently cross Hewood Road to go visit the cafe over at Mitre 10, so they saw the signals going in at Matson's Ave is a real positive and a lot safer for their residents to go and, or they go to the mall and to get across Hewood Road to go and do their shopping or off to have a coffee over at the um, Mitre 10. And it also provides um, mode, mode choice and um, for travel and the connection to other cycleways around the city. So these were the, um, some of the issues that I sort of touched on earlier that were raised by some um, raised by submitters. We received, um, just as a breakdown from Hewood Road itself, we received 172 submissions from residents and businesses on Hewood Road. Um, and the, probably the main, the biggest thing was the loss of parking. Um, so in relation to the residents, the loss of parking was, for them, a lot of people were concerned about home services being able to get to their property, um, the likes of Nurse Maud, um, Meals and Wheels, lawn mowing contractors. Also concerned about um, if they had family or friends visiting and they couldn't get a park outside their house that they wouldn't come and visit them. And um, once we received that feedback, um, Ollie and I met, went and met with Age Concern and just spoke to them about the concerns that were raised by these um, older people living on Hewood Road. And um, they saw their feedback was that the services that are provided, if they can't get a a park up the driveway, they're happy to park on the street because it's able-bodied people that are um, visiting these people and they would not not visit people if there was not parking outside the house, so that was good to hear. Um, and they've also offered support that they can also provide um, a service where they can pick up and drop off people as well. Feedback from the businesses around loss of parking. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, there is a real range of businesses and organisations on Hewood Road. Some of them have off-street parking and some do rely on the parking on-street. Uh, the rest homes and retirement villages, a lot of their visitors are often elderly um, and need to be able, if they can't park on-site, or park on-street. And similar concerns we had from Palmer Funeral Services who um, have a small car park and um, also rely, if the funeral's quite big, um, even though the chapel's not overly large, um, they do rely on on-street parking for some of their funerals. Um, excuse me. We've received a lot of feedback um, around the lane reduction and what the impact of going from the four lanes down to two will mean. And um, it was around people felt that it would cause congestion um, and a reduction in travel times, but Ollie will speak more about that a bit later on. And another one that came through was the cost of the project. So people felt um, that the money could be better spent elsewhere in the city. Um, there was roads, and, and especially on the eastern side of the city, that still need work done, and they felt that the money would be best spent um, and in other parts of the city, and they, they don't see um, cyclists using Hewood Road at the moment. And just some of uh, um, 
few other things is around the impact on the two sports parks and also the changes that we've made at Chapel and Sale Street with the turning restrictions onto Herewood Road and the Wilmot Street closure. And finally, just um, touching on the submissions that we received from both the community boards. Both community boards support the cycleway program, um, the citywide cycleway program. The Waimiro, Fenilton, Waimari, Herewood community board um, were concerned about parking loss for their residents and businesses and um, the impact of restricted parking. Um, the bus stops, how will buses, if they're parked next to a cycleway, um, people getting on and off the bus. Um, the proposed tree removal in the original consultation plan at Bishopdale Roundabout and up at Kilmua Lane. And um, traffic, um, the uh, reduction of the four lanes down to two, however, supporting the Herewood Gardner's Breen's signals and also flagged they were concerned about the cost of the project. The Waipapa Papanui Innes Community Boards, um, like I said, support cycleway programme across the city. Um, support the investment in active transport modes and it's supporting the council's declaration of a climate and ecological emergency. Um, support the intersection changes in the area and the connection to all the schools, um, but also raise concerns with the team around parking loss outside rest homes and also outside businesses. And I think that's you now. So if we take that consultation feedback and, and pull it into a, a plan and put some, some pull-outs on it and see where the areas are that we have, the public have concerns and where we need to focus our attention. Our attention. And um, starting at the, uh, at the western end, look, around the Herewood School, there was a lot of support for the signalised pedestrian crossing. Uh, particularly by the school that saw that as a real bonus to improve the safety for their students crossing over. Um, at, at the same time, there was uh, concern by some of the, the parents around the, the loss of parking outside the school. Um, the school's uh, view on that was that the safety improvements were, were much more important. The Breen's Gardeners intersection, as Anne said, there was a lot of support still around there. The the public are finding it difficult to come out of Gardner's Road and Breen's Road. And that also provides a good connection through to the schools. Uh, Bishopdale Roundabout. Concern around the traffic flow. How will that intersection operate with the partial signals on it? And why do so many trees uh, need to be removed? Through the central section... Parking, a very strong focus on Copenhagen Bakery and, and the high demand of on-street parking there. It's a very popular business. Uh, congestion associated with the removal of a traffic lane and uh, new traffic signals. Um, residential parking reduction, uh, particularly around uh, people having access to the properties, people coming to visit and, and social isolation. Down at the eastern end, there was concern around the about the uh, two-way on the north side of the road running past Golden Age. Uh, safety concerns with the operation of that and associated with that the restriction of Chapel Street and Sale Street to entry only or exit only and the cul-de-sac at Wilmot Street. So before we go on, uh, if we just wanted to, to pause there and see if there's any questions around the consultation feedback. Just, um, sorry, this, this is actually the first time that I've chaired a um, cycleway hearings panel. So um, thank you very much for the level of detail that you've provided. It's extremely helpful. I know the area very well. I grew up in, in Papua Nui and uh, I used to go and pick raspberries at um, uh, Harrow's on Sawyer's Arms Road. So I've cycled this route, um, or parts of this route, um, way before it got busy with traffic. So, um, but uh, I just wanted to ask a preliminary question, which has been puzzling me for some time. 
and that is is that the underpass to the airport at Johns Road seemed to be um, decided quite separately from the conversation that we're having now. So who made that call and uh, when was that decision made? Oh, look, I'm, yeah, I don't have the information to, uh, to better answer that. Uh, maybe uh, Lynette? It, Is it, it, yes, uh, when... Uh, I, I couldn't answer the when off the top of my head, apologies, um, but it was made by NZTA. So that was the decision to put the underpass under Johns Road at the top of Hewitt Road was made by NZTA as part of the Johns Road upgrade that finished a couple of three years ago. And that w- that's the um, oh. one of the... Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, Rons, Roads of National Certificate yes. Significance. It, it was one of the, it, well, it was off the back of one of the Rons projects in the, um, so there was the Western Belfast bypass that was put on and then the, the um, improvements around John's Road and <clears throat> right round to Carmen Road. So yeah. it was off the back of all of those projects that were joined together, yes. It's, it's just a preliminary question. I know it's not specifically relevant, but I just yeah, wanted right. to have it clear in my head. Did, did, did you know when that decision was made, Aaron? You... Um, it was post-quake, and uh, it was the irony is Nairi Button and myself lobbied hard to get it because we'd received submissions during the rebuild of Christchurch to do it, that the airport wouldn't be accessible, but it w- was as much for recreation mountain biking as it was for ever accessing the airport. So but it was to access that, that yeah, road yeah. around. Yep, yeah. no, that's yeah. good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. A mystery has been solved. Thank you. And it's also won awards for its design. Um, so y- you said that there's significant interest um, from across the city on this one. Is is Has that... Is, is that because um, not all the people that would want to use it would be um, living in the immediate vicinity, or is it um, is this n- normal? I mean, because I'm I'm sort of asking a more generic question because I don't I haven't sat on one of these before. But is it normal for quite a a broad range of um, people putting input in like this? Oh, absolutely. I think. Um, as we've gone on with the Sakaway um, consultation, every time we do another consultation, it does generate interest citywide um, as people start to use them. And there's a number of cycling groups out there. Um, for example, with our information sessions next week, we've got a group from called Wednesday Wheelies. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of um, older adults have formed cycling groups, and I think as a citywide project, um, that they, they do see the, the the bigger picture in terms of the program of cycleways that we're so putting the, the network. Yeah, the network yeah. of and how okay. they can connect. That's, yeah, that's very helpful. Well, I'd add, wanna... I'd add, yep. Sorry, I was just going to add. Part of that is the fact that it is we are connecting up a network. Yeah, uh, just creating that. Other panelists, do you have questions, Aaron? Yeah, I um, have have some. So there's our design seems to be based around following on from the Mayor's first question, around the underpass. Um, but the the design at Memorial Ave is considerably different to when the uh, underpass design went in, which was to obviously go under. It's very easy to cycle. I see people scooter through the Memorial Ave intersection and stuff now. Yet we've stuck with this design and people say, why? Because if you're coming from town, it's 2k further to go via Hewood Road to the airport than go straight up Memorial Ave. Um, the decision's been made to for this route. We're, we're talking about the yeah, design. and it seems to be based on that underpass, not based on like numbers. Have so my question is: Have we seen the numbers of the people that are at the airport or on the airport campus who want to bike to work and where they're coming from to support? Yes, it is Hewood Road, and you would use the underpass because they're all coming from there. Aaron, or, Aaron, Aaron. Or is the, someone in Burnside going to go the long no, way? No, we've made the decision that Hewood Road is the is the route. So what we're but, okay. Dis- so when that decision was made, where was the evidence around who was coming from where? Look, I'm happy for that to be taken offline, but um, it's I think not it's important. It's not an issue for our hearings yeah. panel. We are we are 
developing the um, approach. We're going to hear submissions on the um, well, that on did the come design. up a number of times in the yes, and the issue is going to be the design, not the route. Sorry, Mike. I, I guess fine. On. There's no requirement that if you use the cycleway, you have to bike from one end to the other. Is there? No, thank you. Right. So, but that, that, that's not necessarily um, as helpful as it might have sounded. Aaron, did you have other questions in relation to the design proposal? Uh, yes. So the um, because it's come up a I mean, lot sorry, the in the feedback, the um, the reduction of the two lanes down to one because that's one of the big sticking points along with the parking and stuff. But I don't have any questions around that. But the reduction on an eighteen thousand vehicle a day road. Has, and I'd asked the question in the past, but no one had the info. Has the, it been done in New Zealand before? Have we reduced two lanes to one with that volume of traffic? Because when I looked it up overseas, that model's normally around a maximum of 12,000 vehicles. You would do a reduction. Eight to 12, so maximum of 12. Yeah, look, there's, um, look, there's a number of roads that are carrying 18,000 vehicles and they have one lane in each direction. It's not the question. No, I, I realise that's not the question. Um, but there are a number of roads that have that. Uh, up in Auckland, and I'll come to that in the, in the central section uh, presentation, um, there is a, a road up in Auckland that has been reduced, and that was running at, I think, about 20,000 or 22,000 vehicles, and it's now one lane in each direction, and it's created a, a cycleway, um, wider footpaths and, and urban landscaping. So you see, it has been done before. So it has what road was that? So I can look it up. When we come to the that four lane section, I'll, I'll point okay, that out. Thank you. Yeah. And then finally, um, when the analysis was done, it had all uh, a whole lot of different analysis, but the one that was missing because it came up again during the consultation was the cycle count. Mm. What was that? So uh, the, the cycle volumes currently on Hewood Road at, at the underpass is uh, 100 riders a day. Right. Uh, around the Nunwick Park section, 150 riders, increasing to 150, 200 as you head down to the eastern end, so Bishopdale Mall through to the Chapel Street area. All oh, right. And when was that cycle count done? That was 20, well, early this year. Right, because I've had emails from people complaining that they'd asked the council for those numbers during the when they were going to do their submissions and couldn't get them. Mm. Why were they never made available? I'm not aware of that. Oh, okay. It's not something that's come to us to, to answer. But um, there, there have been, and as part of Council's ongoing uh, traffic counts, a, a lot of the counts do include uh, pedestrian and cycle movements, uh, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Was, I think we should publish those because what people in the public were saying were not those numbers. Right. So if we have that, factually, we should be saying, hey, look, these are the numbers from our traffic counts. That would be very yeah. helpful. I mean, so, part of the reason why I well, wanted Well, people are saying this, 20. Yeah, but the, the part of the reason why I wanted this um, briefing to be live streamed was so that, uh, you know, the, um, you know, collateral material is available publicly yep. and people clearly understand what the issues are. Yep. So, and, and also, obviously, myself um, gets up to speed with all of the elements of it. That would be really good if you could publish that data. Um, be extremely helpful. I think the public would find that um, incredibly useful. Mike, did you can have I, a question? Can I? Yep. Sorry, can I just add to that? All of our um, cycle information is published and it's it's live on our website. So what I'll do is through other forums, but I'll, I'll make sure that it's made available and the links to it are made available through this um, the, the web page for this. That, that would be great because every now and again, and I'm not being critical, but sometimes I find it hard to find information that I'm looking yep. for on our council's website. Yep. <laughs> Can be. We're looking to simplify that too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mike. Thanks. A um, couple, couple of questions. So there's already been a previous decision to reduce Heward Road from four lanes to two lanes. Yes, that was in 2010, just prior to the quakes. Okay. And do we, there's obviously sorry, been... Sorry, that's, that is absolute news to me. I, oh, don't, okay. I didn't know that. Yes, it, it was, my understanding, it was initiated by uh, Brent's Intermediate because of their concern for cycling to school. 
Um, also, did we so, have... so, sorry, sorry. Was that a city council decision? Uh, yes, that's right. That was in 2010. Uh, there was consultation with the community and then a, a council decision to uh, provide a cycle lane on Hereward Road uh, by removing the traffic lane. Right. That was never, and it was never built um, because the earthquakes came along. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I assume we've done modelling um, on the reduction of two lanes and also the I guess the improvements to Sawyer's Arms Road. Um, so what the, is the what is the, the team will cover this in detail, Councillor? Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, and I've got Jason. Sorry, I I missed your yellow hand. So thank you for letting me know. No problem. Thank you. Um, yeah, just a quick, quick question in terms of the linkages from the school. So around the initial consultation question, was there any consideration of the linkages between the cycleway and the schools? Because like they're kind of a few hundred metres to three, four, six hundred metres back. And so the, the those connections there, was there any cons kind of consideration on whether there will be any um, more formal linkages between the schools and the cycleways in future, or was that considered as part of the consultation process? That's, um, that's probably one for me. That's, um, that's part of the broader cycle connections program that we have got as part of the um, LTP. So, there is, a, there is a couple of programs of work going through the LTP that look to link key trip generators like um, shopping malls or uh, schools or any other type of facility where people, we think, you know, larger numbers of people want to get there by bike um, or, or other active means. Um, and so that, and, and one of those is actually specifically looking at linkages off MCRs, particularly to education facilities. Thank you. Yeah, definitely in the program. Very good. Well, thank you for that. And we'll now move on to the. Is it the West End we're starting from? Uh, yes, that's correct. Design change. Yep. Oh yeah, right. Okay. So 